In this video, I'm going to talk about the upper cervical flexion test for upper cervical spine instability due to transverse ligament laxity or damage. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Upper cervical spine instability has a prevalence rate of 0.6% according to Beck et al. in the year 2004 and is associated with inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis as well as trauma and congenital deviations such as Down syndrome or Marfan's disease. In order to safely apply manual therapy techniques to the cervical area, it is necessary to screen for possible upper cervical instability. According to Catrice et al. in the year 1997, the upper cervical flexion test has an intra-radar reliability of minus 0.27 to 1, so poor to perfect, and an inter-radar reliability of kappa 0.64 to 1, which is substantial to perfect. However, this test has not been evaluated by diagnostic studies, which is why we are giving it a questionable clinical value in practice. In order to perform the test, have your patient in supine position and stand at the head of the bench. Fixate vertebrae C3 with a key grip into ventrocranial direction. Place your other hand high on the occiput and fixate your patient's forehead with your shoulder or chest. Now perform a gentle flexion movement and hold this position for up to 30 seconds. This test is positive if your patient reports symptoms of dura compression, which is diffuse pain on several segments of the upper back and head or spinal cord compression, which indicates a tear of the transverse ligament. The fixation of C3 is different from the common literature, which describes a fixation of C2. The problem with the fixation of C2 is that we are preventing the dents of C2 from tilting backwards and thus from pinching the dura mater or the myelum. The upper cervical flexion test, however, is a provocation test. By performing an upper cervical nod, the condyles of C0 roll forwards and slide backwards, according to the carlton bond rule, taking the very mobile atlas slash C1 with them in posterior direction. When the anterior arch of the atlas impacts onto the dense, the dense of C2 is tilted backwards and this backward tilt and translation can be excessive in case of a torn transverse ligament, possibly pinching the dura mater or the myelin that is running posterior to the dense. As a side note, the backward tilt of the dense of C2 in turn causes an extension movement of C2 on segment C3. The exact opposite movement occurs with upper cervical extension. In this case, an intact transverse ligament will tilt the dense forwards, causing a flexion movement between C2 and C3. Okay, this was our video on the upper cervical flexion test for upper cervical spine instability due to transverse ligament tears or damage. If you are curious about a test for the ALA ligaments, check out our video on the lateral shear test right next to me. Thanks a lot for watching. Please give this video a like if it was helpful to you or comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and activate the little bell icon next to it in order not to miss any new episodes. This was Kai for PhysioTutors. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.